Hi there. There are various ways in which you can secure your Windows 10 devices using Microsoft Endpoint Manager. One of the more common ways is to deploy BitLocker. Today we're going to have a look at configuring and deploying that to a Windows 11 device. Um, first off, they've got the most, uh, probably the most up to date and uh, preferred way of doing things is through Endpoint Security. You've got disk encryption there where you create a policy, and we'll have a look at that in a little bit. There's also um, the uh, configuration profiles. If you create a profile, go into Windows 10 and later, look at templates, there is an endpoint protection policy if you create that policy um, then you'll see under the various options you've got Windows encryption now I think the key to understanding uh, some of the differences with what you have here against the endpoint security policy um, is that they're slightly different um, obviously the interface is different too but they can complement each other in terms of when you deploy the functionality to devices. Now the last way in which um, I can show you uh, where you've got BitLocker settings is in the um, settings catalog. So if you go to the settings catalog by selecting a configuration profile, Windows 10 and later, and then selecting the settings catalog, just create new policy here and then add settings and in the filter uh, just type in BitLocker and then you'll see here you've got a number of uh, disk encryption so there's the fixed data drives, your operating system, removable drive etc. So if I just select one of those you'll notice that um, you know the options will come up and you can select each of these and basically choose which setting you want to um, you want to kind of deploy. So those are the three ways. The way in which we're going to do this today is we're going to look at the endpoint security um, disk encryption policy, and I've created one here. So what I've done here is I've snapped two windows to the uh, BitLocker policy. On the left here, I've got the settings that I've already created in my existing policy. And on the right, these are the default settings you see when you first create your policy. I'm going to go through these uh, and highlight some of the, uh, the points as we do that. Firstly, you want to uh, obviously enable uh, your encryption for OS and, and fixed drives. Do so you want to switch that on? The next uh, setting really is um, the high prompt uh, about third party encryption. Now this is quite an important setting. By switching this on, you're effectively looking to install a BitLocker in silent mode. Um, as standard, when you uh, select this and non-configured, it will prompt the end user to make a decision and ask them whether they already have um, the device encrypted by another third party tool. So what I would advise on that basis is do your homework on your platform and your devices already deployed out there. And if you do have other encryption tools uh, deployed, um, then this might not be the right approach for you. The allow standard users to enable encryption during um, autopilot is important if you're uh, using Azure AD joining for your devices, for autopilot devices. If this is not set to yes uh, and users aren't administrators, you haven't set them up to be administrators, then the silent or, or automatic encryption is not going to work. So that's quite important there. On this next setting, configure client driven recovery password rotation. You do have a few options here. As you can see, um, I'm choosing enable rotation Azure AD and hybrid joined devices, but it may be you're deploying only to Azure AD joined devices. The purpose of this really is so that once the uh, key, uh, the password is rotated or changed and that therefore removes potential backdoor um, security uh, issues if a user has ever provided one during uh, a support request for example. 
Right, so moving on down to the fixed drive settings, and I'll do that on both sides. You see, as um, by default, you've got the this is switched off; it's not configured. So I'll just switch that on to show you the options in uh, in comparison. So I've got some settings already uh, configured here. I've switched the fixed drive policy on, uh, and under the fixed drive recovery, I've configured that. And I've got a few options that I configured here. The importance of this setting here, required device to backup recovery information to Azure AD, is that if your recovery key cannot be created and saved, basically the uh, encryption will not take place. There are two more settings here just to highlight. The block write access to fixed data drives not protected by BitLocker. So by switching that on, you're basically ensuring that you're not saving your data to unprotected drives. Um, and this might be important for compliance reasons. And then you get to select the encryption method. Now, by default, um, the fixed drive disks uh, will be set onto AES 128-bit. And the preferred uh, encryption level really is the uh, AES 256-bit. This obviously gives you more security on the uh, encryption, um, but uh, please note that if you do use that, any devices that are maybe on low spec hardware could potentially cause uh, performance issues, so uh, take note of that. So as we move on to the next settings here, we'll look at the uh, BitLocker OS drive settings. So I'll just select that on both sides. Um, as you notice by default this is not configured so I'll just switch that on to give you an indication of defaults so what we have here um, is a selection of options within the OS drive settings under the BitLocker system drive policy and in particular the startup authentication required if you select that to yes you've got these four distinct options here now, according to the Microsoft uh, documentation, which I'll show you in a sec, you need to set only one of these. I've selected TPN startup um, rather than the start TPN with pin or key or, or key and pin. The reason for that is I want to deploy this on a Windows 11 device silently, and I don't want the uh, the end user being prompted in order to to set something up so I've gone for this option here if I quickly show you the Microsoft documentation here as it shows um, only um, only one of the additional authentication options can be required at startup otherwise an error occurs okay so that's just to kind of verify that there now the TPM is um, hardware that's on your on your device and it effectively um, maintains or stores a, a decryption key uh, which is obviously personal to that device so when BitLocker encrypts the drive the decryption key is stored within the TPM so the last um, settings we need to configure here is um, I'll click that down uh, is the removal drive settings I'll do that the same side here so you can get an idea so by default it's not configured so I've set this to be configured and I've matched the encryption method um, to my other drive settings now there are two other settings at the bottom here block write access to removable data drives not protected by BitLocker now the reason for not configuring these is there can be conflicts if you're wanting to deploy different rules for different devices now I picked this up from uh, another website or blog and uh, this is the method I'm going to try but in this particular vein if you're going to do that you will need to configure these two settings instead using a configuration profile so that's what we're going to, we're going to quickly do let's go over to the configuration profiles I'll close this down and we want to go over to uh, configuration profiles create a new profile we showed this before actually and select templates and then the endpoint protection policy
set that up. And within here, we've got the Windows encryption option. Now, the particular settings I'm interested in are those as we uh, just showed. And th they're these ones here, BitLocker removable data settings. Now, if we set that to blocked, uh, and we'll also set this to blocked, to allow us to target the specific devices we want to encrypt a uh, removable data drive settings on. Now, why, why might we do that? Well, it may be that you've got certain departments or uh, certain end users that you do not want to deploy this to. They might be starting their device uh, using USB, for example. Um, but essentially, any USB device that's uh, inserted into that into that machine, it will be read only. You'll only get read only access until that USB uh, key is actually encrypted. So, like I say, this is the way you will do it if you want to target specific devices. It's important to note that once you've set those uh, to blocked, you want to keep all your other settings as default. This will make sure that you won't get any conflicts with the endpoint security policy you've already set up and we just showed. So at this point, I want to sw switch over to this website here. Petri have done a really good uh, best practice for deploying BitLocker with Intune. And this essentially is the guide that I followed. Uh, it's one of the better ones that I've seen out there on the internet. As you can see, it's uh, Rue Campbell and basically it's fairly recent, so fairly up to date. Now, go ahead and have a look at that website. Uh, but the last point I want to raise here, if we go down, down, down the page to the bottom of the, the guide, you've got some important notes about Intune BitLocker deployment. I think they're worthwhile in raising. So, as it says, we conclude with notes and important prerequisites. BitLocker CSP isn't available in Windows 10 prior to version 1703. So you need to do some upgrades to the latest version, that's quite important. But also, the version you upgrade to may also be important if you don't have Windows 10 Enterprise. So Windows 10 version 1703 to 1803 do not support Windows 10 Pro, only Enterprise. Pro is supported by 1809 Plus. So I think they're, they're quite important factors to consider. Other important uh, information here is, as it says, how uh, BitLocker will not automatically send recovery keys for drives already encrypted. And um, also, finally, in some autopilot um, scenarios, let's get that right, only the default Intune setting of 128-bit will apply. And this affects Windows 10 version 1803 and prior because these versions do not wait until the en enrollment uh, status page, the ESP, has finished before they start encrypting. So, like I say, step through this website. It's quite informative and it will give you uh, an insight into how you deploy this in your own environment. Okay, so we've created our uh, disk encryption uh, policy. I've assigned that to my Windows 11 group. And basically I'm going to do uh, an out-of-the-box experience using uh, Autopilot. We want to deploy this in silent mode. Um, one other thing to consider is you will need to make sure you've got your ESP policy set up. It needs to be switched on for this to work. And now we're going to see this in action. So I've got my uh, virtual machine here. It's running on Hyper-V. It's uh, got a TPM enabled, um, running Windows 11. And I'm going to enroll this device using Autopilot. The device has been added to a device group. Uh, the BitLocker policy has been assigned to the device as well. So that's going to go through and install that during the Autopilot experience. And eventually we're going to get to uh, the desktop uh, where we can have a look at whether BitLocker has been applied silently and that's the main purpose for this um, this video. As you notice I've speeded this video up uh, for the purpose of this demonstration 
but eventually it's going to get to the point where we can uh, slow it right down and have a look at the results just before we do that I just want to show you uh, some other information uh, that's coming up around BitLocker features so if you go to your home within MEM and then click on features in development it will give you the website Microsoft website and show you what features are in development now in here I noticed uh, just the other day that there are some BitLocker uh, changes coming along the line which uh, which is good so here you go so under device security you've got adding 13 BitLocker settings to settings catalog um, and you've got view BitLocker recovery keys for tenant attached that's quite a good one uh, so basically that's saying that if you've got a tenant attached deployment despite the fact that you've got recovery keys um, stored within your on-premise tenant you still have the ability to see the recovery keys within mem so that's quite um, that's quite a nice feature that's coming down the line and there we have it our Windows 11 device um, auto enrolled uh, using autopilot uh, registered into Intune we if we look at some of the details here let's have a look at file explorer you'll see the BitLocker icon that's been assigned to the OS drive here um, if I look at the um, BitLocker manager itself well, within the device you're showing it's showing that BitLocker is on so that's been applied um, in order for that to happen it hasn't prompted me as a user to go and do anything enter any pins um, so that effectively has enrolled and um, encrypted that device silently now if I look at the settings um, on on this machine um, just going to about uh, I can see the device name there which is QLO and if I go cross-reference that within the uh, Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center um, just go to devices windows uh, and then we have it there's the windows 11 device um, it's enrolled it's compliant and i should be able to look at the recovery keys which i can now the reason why you see a number of them here is because i've been testing this before so just to make sure the settings are correct and working accordingly but if i look at show recovery key you'll see that the recovery key is here and I can copy that to clipboard if I needed. So if I was an admin, wanted to assist an end user with this, I can copy that and uh, provide that information as needed. So that's our Windows 11 device enrolled silently using autopilot. I hope that was useful. Please come back and have a look at some of our other videos in this series and we'll see you again soon.